So a very hearty good evening to uh, all the participants to this 36th weekend talk on safety engineering management and analytics. This program is conducted under Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, which commemorates 75 years of India's independence. Uh, as usual, we initiate the program with this wonderful shloka from Upanishad. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityonma Amritam Gamaya, which inspires us to lead from ignorance to the truth, from darkness to light, and from death to immortality. Uh, I welcome all the dignitaries on the virtual dais. We have Professor COESEA, uh, Professor Obi Krishna, convener of the Weekend Talk series. And today we are, uh, have with us our esteemed guest, Dr. Jaya Chandran K, our expert speaker of today's session. I request our dignitaries to put up their videos uh, and we welcome them all to this virtual dais. Uh, Dr. Jaya Chandran K, he is Chief General Manager of FACT Limited, Kochi. He, currently, he is currently working as a Chief General Manager, Corporate Planning, Fertilizers and Chemical, Travancore Limited, and is a graduate in chemical engineering from Government Engineering College, Trichur, MTech postgraduate from QSAT, and a PhD holder in environmental science from MG University. He holds uh, PG diplomas in management and computer applications and an executive diploma in project management. He has over 32 years of experience in uh, FSCT covering the areas of project management and process plant commissioning, manufacturing, and troubleshooting, process plant optimization, ISO audits, corporate planning, and MIS. He's a recipient of PCT uh, Republic Day Merit Awards and Performance Achievement Awards. He's associated with many professional bodies and is a life member of the Inst Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers. He's also a member of the Board of Studies of Chemical Engineering and Safety Engineering in the School of Engineering, QSAT. He's also a guest lecturer for the Indian Institute of Chemical Engineers, the Institute of Engineers, and the FSCT Training Center on Industry Technology and Management Topics such as Environment, Safety, Energy Efficiency, and Fertilizer Industry. And he has published papers in the fields of Chemical Engineering, Environmental Science, Fertilizer Industry, Industrial Safety, and Disaster Management. And today, uh, the audience is privileged to hear him on the topic of Safety Management in Fertilizer and Petrochemical Industry. So I uh, now request our... Uh, Chairman COESEA, Professor Maithi, to virtually, uh, to formally welcome our expert speaker. Thank you, Mom. Yes, Thank you, Dr. Jay Chandran, for accepting our request. And your topic is extremely important for the audience, both from academics as well as industry. Safety management in particular industry very high risk occupations so uh, i'm sure the audience will be extremely benefited particularly from your versatile experiences uh, you have you don't you have not only the fertilizer and chemical industry experience you have experience in the areas of environment in the areas of project management and in different areas of safety, engineering, and occupational health. COE ACA, Center of Excellence in Safety Engineering and Analytics, IIT Kharagpur, heartily welcome you to deliver your expert talk on this very important safety topic. COE ACA. Uh, as you know, uh, working on the noble cause to save people at work in particular and at in the societies at large. I am sure the audience will enjoy your lecture and uh, your lecture also will be in the YouTube uh, uh, from uh, maybe after two, three days. And uh, I am also uh, heartily welcoming the uh, audiences who are basically our motivating factor. And with this, I request Dr. Jaya Chandran to please start your kind lecture. First of all, 
I would like to thank the Center of Excellence, IIT Kharagpur, for giving me such an opportunity to interact with such a group of highly qualified and experienced. Basically, I'm an industry man. And uh, three decades of industrial exposure. My way of presenting may not be exactly as per the academic requirements. With this, let me start my session. So, the way I am planning to present is, I will start something general about industry and safety, some brief about fertilizer industry and petrochemical industry, and the safety priorities and side differences in these two industries. Then, I am trying to link it with my organization, FACT. FACT is having fertilizer and petrochemical plants, WINX. How do we have our safety management here? And then we come to a case study. Even with all these precautions, all these facilities, there was an incident some five years back or four years back. So how we overcome that and what are the learnings from that incident? This is the way I am planning to present. Now, shall I share the presentation? Can you see the slide, sir? Yes, sir. We will. Yes, okay. So, actually, this is the picture of my riverside view of my factory. Fact, this company is making fertilizers, and this is the riverside view of the fertilizer plants of Fact. <coughs> we start with industry. So, actually, industries, because my problem is I am not very expert in that. Uh, academic side, so my way of presentation, I will be starting from some basics and then going like that. So industrial industries actually were developed to meet the basic needs of growing population. So mass production facilities were needed to meet the human needs. And initially it was for basic needs and later slowly it expanded to all the areas. And industrial growth, became a an economy, the development of many nations. But at the same time, with industrialization, the risk and hazards and impact to the environment also increased because we are converting the basic natural resources into value-added products. We are consuming energy and giving out something which are not very friendly to the environment. And one of the main focus of engineering is to improve the safety and environmental friendliness of the industries. Now, I'm leaving environment there. This topic is industry and uh, safety. So coming to safety in any process industry, or manufacturing industry, it always should be that priority should be safety first, and safety, quality, and in that order, safety, quality, and then only comes quantity. So, as time passes, as technology improves, as science improves, the safety become an industry in that integral part of all the process industries. And initially it was all, when there was a mishap, it was in safety started with firefighting. So whenever something happens, it was something like breakdown maintenance. Then slowly, slowly we started improving the system. So procedures are developed along with design so that inbuilt safety systems can be imparted to the processes. In a short way, industrial safety can be referred to the safety management practices that apply to industrial sector generally. Now coming to fertilizer side, because there are different types of industries, today we are focusing specifically on fertilizer and petrochemical. Basically, fact is a fertilizer company, and fertilizers are developed to meet the 
food needs or food security of the growing population. So fertilizers are a direct linkage with agriculture and agriculture with food. So meeting the basic needs of masses and when you see there are different types of fertilizers available. We have seen in or even in school classes about N, P and K elements required for plants and since even though nitrogen is abundantly available in air, it cannot be access, uh, directly accessed by the plants, so it has to be converted to water soluble. For that, we do this fertilizer industry. So, whatever be the level of development, we need food to sustain our lives. And so, this is very important for the sustenance of mankind, laser industry through agriculture and through food. Now, when the moment you think about fertilizer, there may be confusions or arguments. We hear about organic fertilizers, biofertilizers. Biofertilizers is nothing but living microorganisms which can fix nutrients to the soil. And uh, there are different arguments, there are different interpretations, whatever be the argument. But we need fertilizers because the moment you keep on removing the continuous cropping is there because, or in, a, in another way, when you see it, naturally there are the, all these nutrients are available in the soil. The moment you do the continuous cropping, agriculture, then these nutrients are removed from the soil. So, Somebody has to replenish this nutrients or soil for getting more food. And as we, as the time passes, the land available for cultivation that also is coming down. Because as the population increases, we are utilizing land for different purposes. So we need to improve the crop, the available vegetable land. So there is the importance of fertilizer. And uh, in that picture shows India. India picture, it shows the major fertilizer plants in India. There are almost 164 fertilizer plants in India, in which almost 33 are urea manufacturing plants. Around 20 are NP, NPK plants. And about 10 are ammonium sulfate plants. And almost 100 are SSP plants. And that is one ammonium. 64 chemical fertilizer plants available in India as of now. And uh, the, we all might have heard or we all have heard about the green revolution and its importance in food self-sufficiency for India. And as a part, a lot of fertilizer industries were developed. And already mentioned about chemical, organic and biofertilizers the confusions and coming to chemical fertilizer N, nutrient N, it is mainly focused on the vegetative growth. What, what, whatever we see above the ground, vegetative growth. And P, nutrient P is focusing on the development of root system below the soil. And K or potassium is mainly for flowering and seed. So it's an all-down growth. These are the major three nutrients and other nutrients are there, secondary and uh, micronutrients right now. Just all these nutrients are um, uh, can be supplied through different fertilizer combinations. And the total fertilizer production capacity of India is around 56 million tons. Out of this, last year production was almost 42 million tons and we imported almost 1.5 uh, 19.5 million tons because this potash element is not available in India. So whatever potash requirements for India is totally imported. We also import a lot of urea and DAP. And India is considered or ranked second in the world for the production and consumption of fertilizers. That's the importance of fertilizers for us. So when you see these fertilizers, there are two types of fertilizers, nitrogenous and phosphatic. Nitrogenous mainly urea. So all urea plants are linked with ammonia. So 
interesting thing is that if it's a urea plant, there is only one raw material, either gas or naphtha or furnace oil or whatever it is, any fossil fuel which can supply hydrogen, can act as a source of hydrogen. So we take hydrogen from that you know, fossil fuel, take nitrogen from atmosphere, combine it and make ammonia. And this ammonia, during this process, we generate a lot of carbon dioxide. We combine this carbon dioxide with ammonia and make urea. Simple process. But systems are complicated. Control systems are complicated. But it is something similar to a petrochemical plant, ammonia plants. The moment you come to phosphatic side, it's NP or NPK. The number of raw materials are different. You may take ammonia as a basic raw material for source of nitrogen, but you can also take nitric acid as a source of nitrogen. Then you may take phosphoric acid as source of P, or you can take rock phosphate acid. Mainly sulfuric acid only you take. So these different combinations are coming. If you require a K element, you need to take MOP or sulfate of potash water. So there are interesting thing is that we need to go for a lot of solid handling in these plants by way of sulfur or rock phosphate or MOP or even somewhere you add urea also as a source of nitrogen. So handling of bulk raw materials, then you need to handle a lot of intermediates. This intermediate like uh, ammonia, sulfuric acid, phosphorus, acid, all are sort of chemicals, then product handling, raw material handling, so a lot of choking problems. So this phosphatic and, and types are different types of industries. When you think about pet uh, petrochemical, the simple definition is it is derived mainly from hydrocarbons and uh, Includes a list of products like plastic, synthetic fiber, filaments, filament yarn, rubber, uh, detergent, or other intermediates. And uh, main feedstock is mainly petroleum or petroleum related products, either gases of NATA or what. Products. Because right now, the clothing, furniture, automobile, many things are coming from. Because there are two, three different types are there. The building block, if you see, it is coming from naphtha cracker, maybe as ethylene or propylene, some, some building blocks, that's the basic things. Then it can you can convert it into by polymerizing this LDP, HDP, or PVC, polypropylene, different types, types you can convert it. And uh, synthetic fiber intermediates you can make, including this caprolactam or uh, PTA, all these things you can make. Then surfactant site, linear alkyl benzene, LAB, or something like that. Then this intermediate like caprolactam, you can further polymerize into nylon 6, synthetic fibers, PSF. So different, at different levels, you get different pro product. The importance of petrochemical. And petrochemical compared to fertilizer, it's a complex process. And value addition may be much higher than fertilizer, depending on the product it's generating. And sophisticated equipments and more quality requirements and uh, safety requirements are required. It handles a lot of flammable hydrocarbons and uh, sometimes even can be a combination of toxic components. Any of the things are having low flash points. So here, more focus will be on safety by design or in so fixed fire protection systems for critical installations and storage. Of course, that's a must in petrochemical site and automatic gas monitoring, gas monitors, and fire water spray systems in many critical areas. There, so. Coming to a typical safety focus in process industry, you can see some four or five heads by process. Think about process safety. You have to start with design, safety by design. Then fail safe control systems, safe operating procedures or standard operating procedures. Then certifications like ISO for environment. 
for safety, for uh, energy, different ways or other. All these things will help you to improve your safety. Then, when you focus on manpower or the person who is operating the plant, because man-machine materials, you cannot forget in any industry. So, for improving the quality of the person who is handling the industry, there are the management has to focus in a, we start with a safety policy showing what exactly or what is their intent or importance to safety that industry is giving. They work procedures on all the levels, whether it's operation, whether it's transportation, whether it's handling chemicals, whether it's whatever it is. Then training is a must. Any industry is starting, they, all the training start with safety training. Then mock drills and other uh, availability and usage of PPEs for manpower safety. When it comes to machines, mechanical integrity of the machines, that of course that also is improved by design and planning different types of maintenance. Then standard things called work permit systems for maintenance, inspection and predictive, preventive different types of maintenance because we cannot wait for a breakdown maintenance. So that's the safety of the machine. When you think about materials, when you handle a lot of hazardous chemicals or materials, safe operating practices for material handling are required. Story transportation, handling, then inspection in all these levels. Then, of course, we'll be seeing all these things in the coming slides, how we are doing in our company, from cards, transport. A safety culture has to be developed in any industry, with starting with the commitment of the management to improve the existing systems, because what as we see that there is, there never exists a situation of zero risk. So, with all these precautions, even hazards can happen. So, a safety culture is to be developed in all the industries with management commitment, audits, occupational health, supporting the manpower involved in the process, safety committees, housekeeping is a part of it. So, these are the different focus areas in process industry. Now, I'll here, what I'm planning to do is, I'm representing FAT, FACT. FAT has fertilizer and petrochemical production facilities. One plant we make phosphatic fertilizer as intermediate, sulfuric acid as intermediate, phosphorus as intermediate, then ammonia sulfate as a secondary product. And the second division, we make caprolacta, starting from benzene. So, we have some exposure to both these type of industries. So, I'll, next four or five slides, I'll just mention how is fact and what is fact and then how we do our safety practices here. When you think about fact, it's a very old organization. 1943, even before independence. In 1943, by the then Maharaja of the Travancore state, Sri Chitra Dirinal and Divan Sri C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer, fact was incorporated as a private sector. To meet the fertilizer demand, because it was the thought came from the Bengal famine impact. Where Packs of people lost their lives and there was severe famine. And we started production in 1947. In, and we started production at a place called Udyogamandal. Then in 1960, we became a state public sector undertaking and 1962, Government of India became the major shareholder. Then onwards, FACT is a fertilizer, PSU under the, or central PSU. Then there's a series of expansion and diversification. 1965, our design and engineering wing FEDO was started. 1966, our engineering fabrication wing FEW was started. 
we call it CD Cochin division with a urea ammonia ammonia urea complex. And in 1976, we further diversified to complex fertilizer. Then our entry to the petrochemical side, copper lactam, in 1990. In 1998, the next addition was a new ammonia plant. Of, at that time, it was a naphtha based plant. In 2013, we shifted to gas based, LNG based. So these are the major. If you think about fact, the only industry in the world started with firewood as the basic raw material, and in 60s shifted to liquid fuels, and in 2013 further shifted to RLNG and still operating more than 100% capacity. So we are changing with time and technology during the last 75 years of embracing the change. So it's something like a university. We all learn as time passes. So all our control systems started with pneumatic systems and then changed to PLC. And now all the plants are having DCS distributed control systems. So we are changing, incorporating the changes, improving the safety. These are the major plants we are having in uh, Udyavandal complex. Fertilizer side, we have a 900 tons per day ammonia plant, which can generate around 3 lakh tons of ammonia annually. Then ammonium sulfate plant has a capacity of 2.25 lakh tons. Factum force two plants together have, have a tons. Sulfuric acid, two sulfuric acid plants together a capacity of almost 3 to 3.3 .3 lakh tons. And our production units in Udyoga Mandal are certified for 9,000, ISO 14,000, and ISO 50,000 energy because we are uh, coming under patch scheme because of our ammonia plant. So we got this 50,000 certification also. Coming to the next production division, Kochi division, there the number of plants are less, but the capacity is higher. Factum Force plant is almost three times capacity, 4.85 go up to 6 lakh tons. And uh, sulfuric acid, we have 1,000 tons per day, almost 3 lakh tons. And uh, 360 tons per day, almost capacity of 1 lakh tons for acid. These plants are certified for 9,000, 14,000, and 45,000. Coming to the petrochemical wing, we have a capital lactam plant, 50,000 tons per annum capacity, where the starting material is benzene, Converted to benzene is in a plant converted to cyclohexanone. We call another plant, we take fertilizer inputs of sulfur dioxide, ammonia, and carbon dioxide, make it hydroxylamine sulfate. We call it Hyam. Combine these two in a third plant, lactam. And along with that, during the process, we generate ammonia sulfate liquor, which is converted. We also generate almost uh, 500 tons of. No, 5,000 5, tons of nitric acid and almost uh, 6,000 tons of soda ash as co products. So, this is our petrochemical side. So, we handle almost 50,000 tons of then converted to cyclohexane, then cyclohexanol, cyclohexanol, all these intermediates are there. So, coming to the safety management practices we are having, because we, since we are having both petrochemical and fertilizer, we have a mix of safety precautions because we started with fertilizer then converted to uh, petrochemical then partly so our team is always flexible so starting with any safety management any safety management should start also have a safety policy and separate safety policies for both the divisions so comply starting with general terms like complying statutory requirements following the procedures and safety precautions, quality, then training, focusing on training and education, employees, contractors, and even public. So this shows the company's commitment to workplace, health, and safety. The auditing and alternate other year by an internal team. So in both the divisions, it is done separately. So, uh, this details is for coaching division, 19 by one external team, 20 by a multidisciplinary team, 21 by FEDO, like that. Same way, Udyogamandal also is audit safety 
audit is done by a different set of people. Inspection. Priority inspection is uh, under the leadership of factories and boilers, government of Kerala, with chemical ins inspectorate and all the statutory bodies, they, along with our employees, they will come annually and uh, do the, the inspection and plan visits and they discuss with safety committee and or what are the observations, what are the notings it has discussed and the actions are to be initiated and we need to uh, submit a complaints. Then joint safety inspection by the internal interdivisional committee because we have multiple divisions like the coaching division. So interdisciplinary team is developed to do the safety inspection, joint inspection periodically. Then of course, standard thing, laws level is housekeeping inspections. Housekeeping inspection is mainly, uh, mainly done by safety department along with the committee members. We make a safety committee having members from different disciplines and departments. And the report is given to the department. And so all these things are another idea. And our main area is the transportation handling of hazardous chemicals. Here, this includes not sulfur, sulfuric acid, horse acid, benzene, because benzene we need for uh, caprolactic. And these materials are moved by road and waterways because our production divisions are connected by road or waterways, inland waterways, IW3, or, uh, uh, National Waterway 3 is passing through Elur and connecting to Pochi Division. So extensive safety audit of ammonia and really surprise inspection by Safety department is done during and after filling because daily the filling is happening. So regularly our safety team will be doing the inspection, random checking. Then prem guards are ensured for bad transportation. Pre-dispatch pre inspection because here the main area is the main area is ammonia or uh, Concern is for ammonia, so we give special care on ammonia, incident on ammonia. So after that, we made these things more tight for ammonia, conducted during every dispatch. So inspection is done during every dispatch. Joint inspection by process, mechanical and instrumentation departments are done every fortnight. And uh, live location tracking system through GPS is installed. So that is also a special thing for ammonia. Then another point is, we make it a point that the, there are even uh, some, uh, very few things are getting uh, reported as a real accident. There may be many near miss accidents or near miss things happening which was not finally converted into an accident so we encourage our staff to report near miss near miss reporting system and we keep uh, points where they can report it and we even reward them and take on specific areas just like one alert i have shown in the picture it's showing uh, on one sulfuric acid one acid tanker <laughs> Uh, while loading it away, when it was not properly uh, inserted, it started leaking acid, so something like on that. So we give warnings near that point so that the contract employee or the person there, he will give more attention to such things. So near miss reporting system is developed and we ensure it. It started from 2019 latest onwards. Then also visit other factories, similar factories. In Kerala, we have very limited number of factories. Of course, cement side, Malabar cement, BPC, Kochi refinery is here. That's the biggest one here. Then International Airport, DP also different types of safety mechanisms, how they are handling that also we see. Then final thing is safety management. Uh, so we do for improving the involvement of employees and contractors competitions during safety weekends, service celebration, 
applicants. Inspection and uh, award given to winners. Safety conscious worker is selected. Near miss reporting. That also we give award to the person. So these are a few things. Then making people get ready in case of an emergency. That is emergency preparedness. So to tackle the different levels of emergency, factories and boilers approved on-site and off-site emergency uh, plans are developed for different scenarios and contingency plans for chemical transportation. Yes, we have contingency plans for all these things. And these chemicals are moved by road and barge. Then, apart from this uh, emergency preparedness, there is a mutual aid plan from with the neighboring industries so that in case of an emergency, we will support them and they can also support us. So both the divisions are having tie-ups or MOUs for a mutual aid plan with the nearby industries like BPCL and uh, and LNG. On-site emergency plans we try twice in a year, every six months. Off-site emergency plan is to be initiated by the district administration. Local emergency models we conduct quarterly in all the divisions separately. So some of the pictures of on-site emergency models done. This is uh, in Utyogamandal. So each uh, models followed by discussions and uh, analysis. 20, 2019 cyclohexane. The other one is done in fertilizer side ammonia. This is oil fire and captive power plant. Uh, so, different types of scenarios we do. This is another set, just a list what we did in coaching division for during the last three years. So, we regularly do the mock drills on site emergency and even with all these precautions, safety systems can fail. So, here I am presenting a case study of an ammonia leak occurred. See, with all these precautions, because there never exists a scenario where it's zero risk. So it can happen. Many things can happen. So, starting with some <coughs> basic information, FACTs, all products need ammonia as a basic raw material. Because we may, whether it's capital lactam, whether it's factum force, whether it's ammonium sulfate, whatever it is, you need ammonia as one of the input. And we have an ammonia production facility at Uthi around 900 tons per day capacity plant. It was a NAFTA based plant 2013. And right now it is performing exactly outstanding performance with 100% capacity. It is running. So, whatever ammonia we generate here, from this, we need to transport almost 500 tons per day to our other production division, Kochi division, because there the plant is having a higher capacity. And ammonia is moved to Kochi division from Udyogamandal, or if there is an import, the import material will be coming to Kochi port. There we have a store. From there also we can move. Two options are there. And these two divisions are connected by Indian water. And company has been transporting ammonia regularly by road through insulated trucks. And from 2013 onwards, we started a portion of this ammonia transfer through barges mounted with bullets utilizing in water. This is uh, for becoming the movement more environment friendly and uh, in order to uh, be a better safety on angle also because as the congestion in the also wanted to move away handling this hazardous chemical from the roads. So we started moving from 2013 onwards. And uh, we already have facilities for loading, truck loading facility at Cochin Port, if you are importing, and also at Udhyogamandal, if you are generating. And we have high volume, long range monitors for ammonia storage as a safety precaution. And ammonia barge loading facility at Cochin Port and Udhyogamandal are there so that barge also can be can be loaded and can be moved to Cochin. So the movement is something like this: ammonia shipment. If something is there, it will come to storage port at Cochin. The production is there; it is there at Udhyogamandal. So 
if production is there, it will move to Kochi division through barges or trucks. And it can even be moved and stored in Kochi port. Or if it's improve, uh, importing, they can bring it to Kochi. A uh, Kochi division, sorry. So this system is some passage or inland waterways is like this. The distance is almost 30 to 32 kilometers from between these two divisions. Uh, IW uh, National Waterway 3, Ammonia Barge route is there. So we are starting from Udyogamandal and moving to Kochi division. The barge is this picture of that barge. So it is operational from 2013. After transporting 1.96 lakh tons of ammonia by this barge, an incident happened in 2016, May 20th, after three years. So in this bullet, in this barge, we fitted six bullets of 32 tons capacity each, and each, are, each can be separately isolated and can be separately handled. And the date uh, was uh, of incident was on 25, time was 5.30 when this mishap happened, started, and uh, the barge was having 192 tons of ammonia, moved uh, around minus 32 degree, filled up atmospheric from the atmospheric storage tank, and uh, moved, transfer travel time generally takes the location name is Chambagara Bridge. And coming to the barge, we have all the statutory certifications or approvals at that time. Design recertification of the bullets were done by Bureau Veritas. Uh, <coughs> this uh, barge classification was done by RINA. Registration was done by Kerala Inland KIV rules. Then permission was given by transportation from Cochin Port. Survey certification by Director of Ports and permission. And uh, there is a these requirements. On 25, 2016, by around 5.30, we noticed a small flange leak at the one upstream flange of one of the bullets during the movement from back Cochin to Udyog Mandal to Cochin. And at that time, it was near that Chambakara bridge. It was in water. Almost 60% of the travel was complete, but populated area. So, barge crew operated the fire water system available in the arch and moved further to a less populated area because it was from the front side and they were uh, engine room was back. So, finding it slowly difficult, but still it was 5.30, 5.45 as time passes slowly and they finally they birthed that place called Eru and uh, it was May. It's a summer time in Kerala and the uh, uh, they could not bring it because even though it was a less popular area, they could not bring the barge close to the shore. Due to draft limitations, it was forced to berth at around 25 feet from the shore by around 6 o'clock. Problem was <coughs> the draft was very low. The fire water system started getting clogged due to mud from the river bed. So before this, they informed the shipping charge in production divisions and the power was increasing and uh, depending on the or, uh, wind direction, crew were not able to continue with the operation of the fire water system because it got clogged. Uh, the barge, they had to uh, stop the barge and the mud banks were there. The, Fire water pump failed, just not properly giving slowly. So statutory authorities were informed from fact, and the offset emergency plan was initiated because as they depend on uh, the wind direction, this ammonia vapor started reaching the banks. Location because it was not a very good road was there, not there at that specific location, but they reached by around six o'clock, but could not board the branch. Barge. As the barge was stationed almost 25 feet from the shore, fire crew could not reach the barge. So what they did is they started with water cotton and from fire engines. By that time, they got 
support from other nearby industries and Kerala Fire Force were also fire engines. 6 630 light was going out. There was no sufficient light lighting there. Then our safety people they somehow arranged a country boat and tried to reach the barge. But they could not climb it because the height of the barge was very high when they tried to climb from the country boat. Uh, it was not easy to climb from the sides. And also ammonia vapor smell was there. This water cutter and water and uh, this old ammonia also was falling. They could even with all these things, they were not able to from the country port. Then finally, what they did is they two extendable safety ladders crisscrossed from the shore for about 25 feet. Our crew, fire and safety crew. Breathing apart as it bordered the plant. There also another issue was lighting was not sufficient and the valve assembly, they could not exactly locate the leaking plant. But smell was high and the water was pouring like anything from the fire engines. So it was very difficult. And also by the time due to wind draft, ammonia vapors are carried to the mainland and cause breathing difficulties for a few people. It was a nightmare for us. So somehow this is the way the, how they approached the barge through ladders from the shore. Leaking flanges was flange was identified. One flange was identified and leak was around. After arresting the leak, there was a lot of water accumulated in the barge. So it has to be it had to be pumped out. And after that, uh, they had to wait for the tide because of the low draft. Started moving to Kochi Division by 2 a.m. The impact of this scenario was five persons were hospitalized. Two of the barge crew and, and actively involved in this activity. Over 10 people complained breathing problems and irritation in ice. Nearby residents they were taken to hospital for first aid and observation. Around 300 families nearby in two kilometer radius were shifted as a safety precaution by the statutory authorities and uh, local administration. Because uh, there was full panic. And the agencies involved in the activity were official officials and Fire service of fact, industries like Kerala Fire Force, BPCL, they all supported. Officials from Kerala factories and boilers, senior officials, pollution control board, they all were available with help and advice. Local MLA reached there, collector and district administration, they were there. Local self government agencies were there. They all, it was a teamwork. And the main bottleneck we observed was the lack of access to the bars. In the meeting, yes. inadequacy of lighting at the site. So the inspection of the barge was done next day by the chief uh, surveyor of port directorate, and liquid ammonia boil of the bullet was dismantled and inspected, and the warring types gasket it was damaged, it was replaced. Liquid ammonia boil and leaf oils were tested. And uh, all this, so as a safety precaution, we did all these things. Now, the system in, uh, system improvements incorporated in this ammonia bar transportation as a part of the learning from the incident. Like we started, we provided ASCA lights on the bars to ensure lighting in case of any emergency. Earlier, it was not there. Then GPS was enabled in barges to monitor the route and if at all any stopping, anything in between, automatically it will be So that was a speedboat was procured as a standby for rescue and relief operations in water. Because for easy access, because we are moving a lot of materials through waterways. So this speedboat was ready. It was on sides of the boat, it was 
because uh, one problem was through country, but when we reached, we could not climb to the barge with, because of the height from the bottom. So two approach ladders were arranged. And daily audit during filling of ammonia and before commencing the journey. It is done a combination of safety officers, maintenance and operation crew. And we arranged public address for the barges. For, because at that time the inbuilt pump, the pump set in the barge, it got clogged because of the, because when it was packed one side because of the mud, it got, so we procured floating pumps for pumping water so that it can put different locations and do the, ensure the availability of water. Air inflatable rescue life raft one was maintained on barge. And uh, water sprinkler system houses were also provided. Leak sealing, belt and parts were maintained in case of an emergency. Preparations of road sketch with low population to birth barge in case of any further. One operation maintenance crew accompanies every barge. That's uh, another thing we started because so that we, along with the barge crew, we started putting our own experience one person along. To stand by because they are just ensured with uh, and enhance the number of PPEs and SCABA full body suits in the barge, enhance the volumes, numbers. And comprehensive training and mock drills on barge crew. Again, we started doing more intensive monthly audit by an interdisciplinary team with report to higher management. After this incident, we have added one more barge made by our own sister concern, FEW. And uh, during the last four years, we have moved, completed successfully completed 4.5 lakh tons of ammonia transportation barges. So after implementing, after implementing all these new precautions and all these additional, so what I'm coming to or trying to tell is whatever be the earlier, we were, uh, at that time we were confident that nothing is going to happen because with the existing system, then when I, when I real system, we knew that yes, there were some gray area, which we at that time we never found it was a problem. So we tried to understand, we tried to, these are the learnings from that incident and we improved our system based on that. After that, we are running smooth. So safety, in short, safety is a journey, it's not a destination, requiring continuous diligence by all. That's for that's all for the time now. Thank you for the patient hearing. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation and uh, detailed case study. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, several questions in the chat box. I will take one by one. The first question is, do hedgehog, sea hedgehog or any other hazard identification techniques are in practice to ensure process safety? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir we do HASOP studies and uh, HASOP studies uh, we do by and also by external agencies, specifically to different plants. We do HASOP studies, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So our next question is, how are the performance of safety programs or safety systems being measured in fertilizer industry? Sir, uh, if somebody need to evaluate, it has to be done by a third party. So what we find is our both the pro production, it is awarded Suresh Shastra Suresh for 2019 and 2020. 
Okay, it's an external agency, National Safety Council, and also we got the award from the Factories and Boilers Safety Award for very under mark uh, for the very large factories by Factories and Boilers. So any rating or performance should be uh, something done by the external agency. So we feel that the recognition of the National Safety Council and uh, Factories and Boilers are a certification that yes, we are taking. Good in our safety practices, but of course, uh, like as I already told, whatever be the level of confidence, still things can happen. So we are still further trying to improve the systems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So next question is, what are the measures taken by the industry to maintain societal safety? Do the local medical facilities have track? of all the chemicals and gases in case any leak occurs at societal level? Sir, we have on-site and off-site emergency plan. And of course, uh, even without any accident happens, we have a occupational health center where medical facility is open to the neighboring uh, village people. There is weekly one day they can have free access to our medical systems. One then this offsite facilities that include offsite uh, emergency plans include uh, the impact to the society and how it is to be addressed. Because any leaks offsite emergency because uh, generally we give different scenarios like gas leaks or accidents in between when we move it all these things uh, included. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, what special safety systems are followed and developed in fertilizer industry, uh, which are different from other process industries like steel or petrochemical industries? The fertilizer uh, main main difference from fertilizer and uh, petrochemical is fertilizer. Okay, apart from ammonia. The moment you think about phosphate, you need to handle a lot of hazardous chemicals, non-volatile chemicals. So, and uh, also you need to handle a lot of uh, solid materials. So, handling of these hazardous chemicals, already we have mentioned ammonia. That's a special area, speciality area. And uh, acids also, like sulfuric acid, handling oleum. We do make and handle oleum for our caprolactam, even though it is for pet uh, petrochemical use, it is generated and handled in fertilizer cell. So, handling these uh, hazardous or uh, toxic chemicals and the solid solids, that because when the moment you start handling a lot of solids, there can be choking, clogging, all these things. So, you need to do special focus on that area. There, you may be requiring more manpower. Yeah, a number of manpower compared to petrochemical side for the same turnover company is much higher in fertilizer side. So we need to think about giving more training to our own people and also to contract people who are is coming. So specific, uh, starting with basic safety training and uh, specific focus on their job nature, how they need to handle. And that's why we are keeping that uh, standard or safe operating practice even display at different points. And this uh, warning, hazard warnings, all these things we are keeping, sir. We are and bring them along with us with regular training because that's why we made it mandatory that their uh, safety training card is compulsory to get the entry pass. Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, the last question I am taking for today's session is the plant safety interlocks in the DCS will be tested periodically. How it is done with plant in production or running condition? Sir, we have maintenance override switches. We call it MOS, maintenance override switches, where because this uh, in DCS, there are trip systems and also so safety interlocks. And I cannot or any industry cannot afford to take a as many of like this capital plant or ammonia plant, if there is a shutdown 
unexpected total shutdown, the startup cost itself will be in the range of 2 to 3 crore rupees because I'll be burning a lot of gas, burning a lot of organics. So there the system is, if you want to do a checking in the DCS system, you will have maintenance override switches for specific areas. But at the same time, for the safety of the plant, you cannot bypass everything together. So what you need to do is section by section, wherever you can safely do, you can bypass and then do the checking. And at that time, more experienced persons should be in the control panel because something may be blank because one instrument or one thing you are taking for uh, taking for checking some area may be blank but experience with experience we can do that we used to do it we have standard procedures for that so may utilizing the mos maintenance override switches we do this dcs checking on safety on a step-by-step uh, -step basis you cannot do that uh, checking totally for a single plan at a single time when the plant is running and uh, whether some critical for the whole plant together then we plan it at the time of shutdown so you do the uh, checking at the time of shutdown when you want to do some uh, thing you do it when you decide to take a shutdown you check that area and along with that you take a shutdown like that also we do yes sir Thank you, sir, for uh, nicely explaining the answers. Uh, and uh, now I would request Professor Krishna to uh, formally provide word of thanks to our uh, expert speaker. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. <coughs> First of all, Dr. Jaya Ramchandran, thank you very much for your whole safety management system, ABC of the whole safety management system, very systematically you have explained, would be very useful to many of the industries. And also, and uh, the case study which you have taken, very happy the, the off-site management work may, may, may not be very effective, they are all in place. Very, very nice uh, presentation. Uh, Travancore, normally we see the Travancore dynasty who ran some two, two, more than 200 years, very famous dynasty. You are reminded of uh, Travancore dynasty. Having said this, see, I, I also have more than 35 years experience in the industries before joining IIT Kharagpur. Oh, the, the incident which you have shown, common in the industries. And the actions are also almost calm. We have done the COESCA has the IIT Karakpur has done a lot of research on this. Because I am aware of the pains and pinches of this. Because it is ammonia, it did not have many fatal incidents. The same thing happened in where CO2 is there, I mean carbon monoxide people will die. Uh, the same leakages, if it is very, very, very mm, hazardous, people will die. So, we have, COE has worked great, very largely in this to help the industries. I want to give you this suggestion. You have put a lot of risk control system. I'm very happy. You have put a lot of risk control system in spite of having a lot of uh, uh, manpower issues to you. It's, it's all common to keeping all these things in view. The COE SE has done a lot of research in this. What happens, the risk control system which you have put, <clears throat> after a few years, it will slowly fading out. Weak. It happens everywhere. People will get a lot of confidence. Oh, I have put all these things, it will work. What is more important, if, if any failure happens, we will notice. But what we have brought is, understanding the weakness parameters of the risk control system, not failures, weakness parameter, like you go for health checkup. Understanding the weakness parameters and understanding the effectiveness parameters. These are nothing but uh, lagging and leading indicators, but we are talking about the weakness parameters, not the failure parameters. See, weakness parameters, everybody will reveal. Failure parameters, don't, nobody wants to reveal. This is number, and this huge data will come. That data we use for analytics and come come with the solutions. Also, you said, uh, see, in the fertilizer industry, 
you require more people compared to other industries. I, I, we fully acknowledge this. CO brought up with a lot of IOTs. The, the Internet of Things, IIOTs, to get the feedback with, with modern gadgets than the people. We have to, to capture this weakness and effectiveness parameters. We propose IOTs, not the people. People may again make mistakes, IOTs. And from that, we 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 will come up with a lot of solutions. This is one of the one of the um, suggestions we want to we want to tell you. And second thing, somebody asked the HAZOP. HAZOP is also a big havoc in the industry. HAZOP feels it is very, very complicated, very, very uh, no, it is not at all. We have come out again. Normally, HAZOP you do for the chemical industries. The COI has come out for the benefit of the organizations, have has up for all disciplines. We apply has up for culture, has up for maintenance, has up for handling, has up for your budgets, anything. The the fundamental spirit of has up is used when selecting the guide words, using the parameters, coming to deviation. These guides guide words will be different, parameters will be different, but the process is same. These two things the COE, because this is the formed by the government of India, Institute of, uh, uh, by Indian Institute of uh, Technology to help the industries. We are trying to, we are trying to propagate this to the industries so that by design, by positive, positively things should be, the incident should be uh, reduced. So I'm very happy with your presentation. And for the viewers, I have given this information for the for the audience because you can think of these things, bringing uh, bringing weakness parameters, the effectiveness parameters, analyzing them, and using IOTs. All these things are the things of the year. Thank you very much, uh, the moderators who has done very good job, and audience, the huge audience response. I am very happy. You keep responding like this, interacting like this. The the speakers will be very motivated. And uh, Mr. Jay, Dr. Jayachandran, you started telling that I am the industry man may not fulfill the academic requirements. No, no. We intentionally call alternately industry speakers. We want industry speakers should speak like industry speakers, not like academic speakers. Academic speakers. As such, every alternate alternate week they talk about lot lot of academics. But as such, you you have spoken a lot of academic things uh, unknowingly or knowingly to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, thank you, th thank you all for attending. Next week again we'll come out with uh, one academic speaker on next Friday at the same time. Thank you very much. And uh, you, at the event. Please. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you.